Hello there, in this PHP tutorial I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about type hinting, return types and doc blocks for PHP. We're just going to be using pure PHP here, no frameworks or databases or anything like that. Now I'm running XAMPP, let's get going straight away. I've created a PHP file on localhost and I'm going to just go into PHP here if I can and uh, I'll zoom you in a little bit. And I'm going to make a function up. I'll call this function uh, allowed. It's going to take in an age value and it's going to answer the question, is this person allowed to drive, right? Or are they old enough to drive? Whatever. Now let's just say that if the age is greater than or equal to 16, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false, okay? So that's our little function here. Now. How does this work? Well, let's imagine that we have a variable called old enough. So is the person old enough to drive, right? In fact, um, I'll just do this comment. Is the person old enough to drive, all right? So very simple PHP here. I'm going to say old enough is allowed. I'm going to pass in an age, let's say 12, for example. And then down here, I'll just var dump old enough. Okay, so are they old enough to drive? So in the case of a 12 year old, of course it's going to say false. In the case of a 45 year old, it's going to say true, all right? So I do hope you'll agree that that's a pretty simple PHP function. Now I'm going to walk you through the three different things and I'm going to write them down for clarity for you here. The first thing I'm going to teach you is called Type hinting, I'll write it down. It's called type hinting, all right? And this is where we indicate what types we are expecting our arguments to be. So in the case of this function here, we are expecting age to be an integer. So we go right before the age here, we say int, little space, and there you go. Kind of easy, right? So that's type hinting. The next thing I'm going to teach you is called return types. This is where we indicate what we are expecting our function to return. So for that, we're going to go after this parenthesis thing here. We're going to do a little colon, a space, and you can see that this is returning true or false. These are booleans. So we can just say bool. And that's return types, right? We've indicated what this thing is going to return. All right. Now, the last thing is the one that always trips me up. This is, it's actually been around for quite some time, although I've only started using this recently. It's called doc blocks. It's all one word, doc blocks. Now, doc blocks, and I'll make sure I get this right here. It's, um... Basically, uh, I did have a definition somewhere, you know. Okay, I found it. So, a doc block is a specially formatted comment block that provides information about a class, function, or method within your code. It's used to generate documentation for your code and helps other developers understand how to use your code effectively. Now, I would add to that that there's also a lot of modern text editors and IDEs that will give users fantastic auto-suggest or auto-complete features when you do this. It's just another benefit, you know. And here is the general structure. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that kind of miserable to look at. Little forward slashes, double asterisks, and all of this shenanigans. So it turns out that there is a plugin that you can get, and the name of the plugin is Doc Blocker. I'll write it here. It's called Doc Blocker. And you can get this plugin. It's a free plugin. And you can get it for Sublime, Visual Studio Code. I think you can get it for Atom and let's just say any modern text editor or IDE. Now, I'm not going to walk you through how to install plugins for your text editor. If you need help with that, leave a comment and I'm sure either myself or someone else will help you. But if you do install one of those, well, life is easy. Because now we can just do a little forward slash, two asterisks, hit return, and there is our basic dot block here for this function. So what do we do? 
we have a description. So we're going to just say indicates if person is old enough to drive. Just plain text, okay? Now, normally we do a space. And by the way, if you need more lines for your description, then that's okay, all right? So the top section is just your plain text description. Can you handle it? Okay. I'll keep that in actually just so you can see this. Now, next, for each and every argument, we say at param, one of these lines here, a little asterisk, at param. And you can see that we are declaring the type. In this case, it's an integer. Don't worry too much about the spaces here. You could have said one space, and that's going to work. Doesn't matter, two, three, doesn't matter at all. But the key thing is we are declaring that we expect our argument to be an integer. It's going to be called age, and let's have a description. Yeah, I should make this a wee bit smaller. All right, so let's have a description, the age of the person. Something like that, right? Now, the return type, we say at return. Clarify the type, so it's a Boolean. And again, chuck in a description. Don't worry about the spaces. One space is enough. And we'll just say um, the result or a Boolean indicating if person is old enough to drive. Something like that, you know? So that is doc blocks. And as a matter of fact, that's type hinting, return types, and doc blocks. That's them all there. And I hope you'll agree that that's pretty straightforward. Now, why on earth would you want to even do this type of stuff? Well, one reason is it can actually give us a little bit of security. Suppose somebody added in, uh, it's very easy to imagine a website where somebody injects something dangerous here, right? Now, this is a string. And if we run this, you'll see it saying, oh, no, you don't. So as you can imagine, this can be excellent for preventing things like SQL injection attacks and so on. So that's one benefit. We've also mentioned the fact that it helps other developers to understand how things work. And another benefit I would say is that when you've done web development for a long time, there's going to be a day, if you've not already got there, where you say to yourself, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to learn C++ or uh, Golang or Rust or who knows what else, Zig, Carbon. And a lot of those more, shall I say the word sophisticated or mature languages like C++, they use this type of structure. This is basically PHP doing an impersonation of C++, right? And when you make that transition to the other languages, and I think it's an inevitable thing, by the way, after a certain point in time, when you make that transition, it's going to be such a smooth journey if you're already in the habit of writing in this type of style. And by the way, this is really an industry-wide trend. For better or for worse, this is the direction that not only PHP is going in, but I think JavaScript and other languages are going towards this sort of syntax as well. So I think it makes sense for us to actually start using this, especially if you are collaborating with other people. I'll give one little caveat, which is if I'm building an app on my own, and I'm the only person who's going to look at the code, I'll often not bother with this stuff, just so you know. But certainly if you're collaborating, this is a good idea. At the time of doing this video, only two PHP frameworks are using this type of syntax, Symfony and TronGate. TronGate doesn't use it completely, but we are building up to it. We're about halfway there. And by November this year, we're going to have all of this implemented throughout, throughout TronGate. I really wanted you to see what this stuff means, okay? So, I hope that that's cool. And with your permission, I'm going to leave you with a few more examples. And I'll, I'll make them sort of increasingly advanced, right? So, I'll comment this out. Very quickly, I'm going to make a little greeting thing. I'm going to have name, age, and we're going to just say hello. Name, you are age. Pretty simple, right? So, how does this work? Well, we, 
Look at me writing Jason. I meant to say John. There we go. Nothing wrong with Jason, mind you. But here's a little greeting function. Pure PHP, I hope you can understand this. Uh, we pass in John and an age. Two arguments this time. We're going to save, refresh, and it says, Hello, John, you are 21. So, shall we dance? Yes, we shall. Let's start off with type hinting. What do you expect name to be? Probably a string. How about age? An integer. There you go. It's as easy as that. Next, what does this thing return? Now, you may be tempted to say string or something, but if you look closely, there's not a return statement here. There's, there's nothing in the strictest of terms. There's nothing actually being returned. So we say colon space void. That's the word that we use. And again, if you were expecting null, well, I think they used void because that's the word they use in C++. So that's what we say if it doesn't return anything, which is the case here. Finally, let's do these dot blocks. Now I'm using this little extension thing, so I'll do my description. Display a friendly greeting. I'll do a little space for clarity. So the description is the name of the person. Age is the age of the person. And then for our return type, well, we can just say void and leave it at that, okay? So there you have it. Another perfectly usable example, and I do hope that that makes sense. Now, what if age is optional? So, for example, what if we want it to work so that if somebody chucks in a name like Bobby and they don't add in an age, we still want this to work? Well, we can say age is null. So this is me making this optional. Now let's think about the three different things. Type hinting. Okay. So name is unaffected, but for age it can be an integer or null. I'm doing a little pipe symbol here and I'm saying null. It can be one or the other. I'll head upstairs here. I'll do the same thing and then I'll say in brackets optional. Okay, now don't worry about the number of spaces. You can have one space if you want, doesn't matter. But there you go. I'm clarifying what is expected. So that's how we do optional arguments. By the way, there's an alternative syntax. I'm going to just copy, comment out. There's an alternative syntax that you'll see. And the alternative syntax is instead of saying, int uh, null, we can say question mark int. So that means we could have an integer, but we might not, okay? It's just an alternative syntax. Uh, both of those syntaxes do the same thing. Both are perfectly valid. Now I'm going to give you just uh, one or two more examples and then we'll be finished, right? Let's do an example of a function that can return a uh, different types. This is very common. So let's imagine, for example, we've got a function called fetch. And we'll imagine that this is going to fetch a record from a database table. OK. All right. So how does that work? Well, look, I'm not going to set up a database here. But typically what will happen is some sort of query will happen and you might have a record object that gets created and returned, you know, so we return this record object. It's very normal. Now, I'm going to just manually create an object with pure PHP and, and we're just going to pretend that we've done a database query, right? So let's just say um, data ID is ID. I'll say data name equals, let's go with Joe this time, and I'll say data age is 43. Now this is an array. How do we turn this into an object? Very easily. We just say record object is an object of array. Okay. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to pretend that record was found. We're just pretending to save time. Okay. I'm just manually creating an object. 
Now, uh, hopefully this makes some sense. Hopefully you can understand this little simulation that we're doing here. So I'm going to say record object is fetch. I'll pass in an ID. And let's var dump record object. Now there's no surprises here. We get an object. It's basically just PHP fetching a record. However, what about situations where a record is not found? Well, uh, there are a few possibilities. In the case of Trongate, for example, it will return false. Now again, let's just say, and we'll do this manually, we'll say record object is false, and I'll just say pretend record not found. It's not an error, it's just that there's no record with this ID, right? So how does that work? Well, sure enough, false. So here we are, it's a function that can return two different types. So how do we do this? Well, as you can imagine, the type hinting is quite easy. We just say int, no surprises there. But for the return types, we're gonna do a colon. And in this instance, we're gonna say it can be object or it can be a Boolean. There you go. Okay, and the comments would be, um, well, we've kind of gone through that and I, I hope that, well, actually, you know what, we'll, we'll do the comments and I'll do the comments right now. Do you know what? Let's do them right now. Okay, so the description, attempt to fetch a database record. Okay, there's our description. We've got an integer. That's the record ID. Okay, our return type. Well, you can see it right here. We say object bool in the description would be the result from our query. All right, so there you have it. Now, there is one more way that you might see this being done and it's probably worth just showing you here. So we'll go, whoops, we'll go like this. And uh, yeah, another example that you might see Depending on the framework or whatever it may be, sometimes you'll see record object is null, not false. Some developers do that. So in those instances, we would either say uh, it's an object or null like that, or we would say question mark object, which means, yeah, you know, it could be found. And that's how that would work. Okay. So uh, that was all of the examples that I wanted to give you here. The only other example that I'm going to mention, just so that if you see it, you don't get entirely lost, is you might occasionally see this. So this is an, uh, an example that I got created in ChatGPT for you. I'm just going to copy it and walk you through it. So in this example, we've got a function. I'll just do some PHP tags. So we've got a function here that expects a member object. So it's expecting an object, perhaps we've fetched an object from the database, it's a member object. So when that happens, we just write member as a word with an uppercase M here. And if we don't say object, we actually say member and we give that object a name like this, you know. And by the way, are you a curious person? Me too. Let's just try it. Why did you not say object? I think you can say object actually. I'm not sure. Aye, so you, 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 yeah, you can say object. Saying object is perfectly fine, but the reason why I'm mentioning this one is because I saw this syntax with Symphony. And in case there's any Symphony users out there, that's what's happening there. Okay, that's us. Thank you for watching. Once again, if you like this kind of content, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you're alive. I need all the help I can get. Stay cool, and I'll see you in the next one.